Hey guys, it's Brad Brexus Metalworks and welcome back to the shop. So hey, in the last video you saw our little Fiat project. Probably can't see it in the video, but it's out there still. Um, but what's on the list right now is a Alfa Romero. And, and there is a reason why I'm bringing up the Alfa Romero. And the reason is our friend uh, who actually dropped this off, Frank Ball, uh, basically is getting this uh, prepared for his son. So we've dropped the motor, doing the timing belt and all that kind of lovely stuff. Make water sure, pump. Water pump, pump. Basically everything, going through the whole uh, mechanical system. But he happened to mention when I showed him my Fiat project that he happened to have one of these lovely Alfa Romero V6 motors. We mentioned in the last video that we were going to put a K and it was going to be supercharged in that thing. Well, guess what? We're not doing that! We got an uh, Alfa Romero V6, so it's going to be completely different. Um, transmission, it's got the tra transmission from the Alfa Romero, I think it's a 164. So the, a motor very similar to this, this one's actually going in this one is sitting over here and what happened was i didn't uh, we haven't actually didn't mention it, i actually didn't even know about it, uh, we were going to get it but now that we know the motor is solid uh we actually go, we took the motor apart made sure it was a you know a good candidate to be rebuilt it had had a little bit of water um, a little bit of scoring gonna have hone those out um, they are known to actually have four rods so especially when you put any boost and you say boost that thing is naturally aspirated yeah but ours isn't going to be naturally aspirated Supercharger. So uh, this is, I don't even know what stage it is, but it is a Rotec supercharger and it's gonna live somewhere either here or here or here or here or here or here. Probably not back here though. So yeah. um, anyway, so that's gonna be quite interesting. I don't know exactly how much horsepower we'll make, but uh, you know, it's a three liter six cylinder um, and it's gonna be forced. So it should be it should be plenty a of power for that little car back there. So a lot of boost. Uh, we need to get this car basically reassembled and so we can start really kind of delving into the Miata, cutting it up and getting it kind of sliced up. Um, and you might see some of that in the video. We'll just kind of see where this kind of tails off. But basically we do have a power plant, we have a transmission, we have a body, and we have suspension. We have no chassis. So we got some work to do still. So. Now we just gotta marry it all together. Marry it all together. So anyway, that's uh, let's go ahead and jump over and I guess we'll see where that kind of takes us. So continuing on, got my Dingleberry Honer here. This is actually diamond encrusted if you haven't seen these before. Yeah. So basically this creates a honer scratch pattern on the piston, or the cylinder sleeve. This one had fallen out uh, when we took the engine apart. And I've actually gone ahead and honed these, just, just ran, the, ran the hone through. We're not trying to actually increase the size or dimension. We're just trying to clean up the debris. So if you can maybe see, there's some slight discoloration still left over. Um, my fingernail does not catch on that, so technically that's good. Um, if, it, if I was actually building this motor for somebody else and designed myself, I'd probably actually get these honed and bored. The problem is, is getting pistons, and everything for this motor is expensive. And we're doing this thing cheap. Like if we don't have it around the shop, we ain't doing it. So um, basically this uh, is gonna hopefully have to be good enough. The only way, I mean, if they're, if they're truly messed up, then I won't use them. So I mean, the next step is I've got to use this tool. So this is a bore gauge. And what that does is allows me to go up and down the cylinder uh, sleeve and make sure it's completely round. And if it's not completely round, then what I'm gonna have to do is obviously bite the bullet and bite some sleeves and pistons, which again, I don't really want to do. So. Uh, let's go ahead and check these out and see how close they are. So what do you know, after using my bore scope here, or bore gauge rather, uh, I checked all these cylinders and they actually look really pretty good. Um, so they're a little out, a um, little out round, but about 10 thousandths or so. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and pull these out. So I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but my son actually works at ProLine, ProLine Racing. So they actually build motors for a living. So I'm going to pull these out and he's going to double check my work and I'll make sure that I'm seeing the correct, the correct thing. We're also going to have to take the uh, block. I got to finish dismantling the block and get this over to them so they can put it in the tank for me. So we can get this completely cleaned up and get it ready for start to be reassembled because we're right around here somewhere. Like I said, in the other video, the rods are weak. Uh, I did get the new rods in. So actually wait, where are those rods at? Let me show you. Aha, unboxing. So here are the rods that I ordered. The absolute finest that money can buy. Uh, I know I said that we're spending no money on this project and we're not, so uh, maybe it's the money that I have to buy them. Um, nice formal Chinese sticker. Nothing but, I like the best from Alibaba. How's that? Nothing but the finest Chinese parts that money can buy. Let's see what we got here.
few moments later. Ah, and with a nice sticker. Everybody likes stickers. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing. There we go. So it's a nice, I mean, it looks nice. Um, actually, let's compare it to the original and see what we look like in difference. All right, so here's the original piston and the rod. Here's the new rod. And I will say it is substantially beefier. Um, it's probably a little hard to tell, but maybe side by side, you can see that there is quite a bit more meat on the actual uh, connecting up right there. So this hopefully will not break under Brett boots. This just is known to break. So with this, we should be in good shape. So next thing is we gotta clean this, disassemble this motor and get it in a tank, get it cleaned and start reassembling it. So since we, so double check the cylinder liners, my son like said, Cam will do that for me. And we'll just need to start basically, hopefully just reassembling it, hopefully if he doesn't find anything wrong. So let me go ahead and strip this thing down and we'll go from there. stripped as you can see so now uh this is what we're not working on and uh, well actually i am working on it we'll have a video on this later um this is actually obviously a 12 cylinder uh lamborghini and i'm not going to say much more than that but it's really pretty cool new intakes new injections uh actually all new computer on that one so anyway so the next step for our fiat project is to wait for the block to get back and so we can start reassembling the motor we're also going to start doing some of that chassis disassembly we got to get the parts out of the miata and start cutting the frame and seeing how much or how little we can uh, actually stretch the car. The, the, again, the goal for cutting it and kind of welding it back together is only to start making sure everything will kind of fit. We're not gonna use the Miata in any way, or Miata frame, any way, shape, or form. So until next time, uh, thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, hit like and subscribe.